Praise the Lord, everybody. Merry Christmas Eve in Jesus' name. On our prayer list, we have the Smyrna Church family, our pastor and First Lady Fowler, Mother Moorhead, Brother Preston Graves, Brother Vincent Ryan, Sister Mae Wilson, Sister Marilyn Turner, Dora Zimmerman, Gwendolyn Rains, Annie Clark, Jerry Faust, those that are at home, sick and shut in, our president, our nation, and the country of Israel. Continue to remember the many families in bereavement. We ask that you remember the Gwen family. Remember Sister Gwen who lost her sister-in-law. If you would like to make a donation, please feel free to mail it in to Smyrna Church of Christ, 1025 Minnesota Church Road, Reedsville, North Carolina, 27320. If you would like to make a prayer request, please call 336 342-2217. Our order of services are as follow. Each Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Sunday school, 11 a.m. morning worship, 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights, Bible teaching by way of Zoom. Our announcements are as follow. On Sunday, December 31st, this is our last Sunday of the month. We invite each and every one to come out to our Sunday school and then follow with our morning worship at 11 and then at 10 o'clock p.m. will be our watch night service, and that is December the 31st. We have some academic accomplishments we would like to celebrate. First of all, we would like to say congratulations to Brother C.J. Hall. We ask that he stay in. Congratulations, Brother C.J., for your first acceptance letter to Elon University. Way to go. Also, we would like to celebrate our very own John Carlos Miller II, who has signed with the Texas Tech in Lubbock, Texas. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. There will also be a floating celebration for Brother John Miller on December the 30th at the Miller's home. And this is from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And they're inviting all the saints. Please come out and let's help celebrate little John. He'll always be our little John. <laughs> our thought for the week. I wish we hated our sin as much as we hate everyone else's sin. Let's examine ourselves. These are the announcements. Bear them in mind in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we're going to have um, a selection from our praise team. Amen. Oh, Brother Deontay. Sure, absolutely. Come on, praise team. Come on, praise team.
Brother Mark, do you know verse of away in, away in the manger?
God. Oh, how great, how great is, is thy God. God. Sing with me, how great is, is thy God. Oh, we see how great, how great. saints if you're here today you're blessed because it's been a tumultuous year it's been a whole lot of ups and downs a lot of deaths a lot of sickness and if you are here you are one of the blessed ones you are definitely one of the blessed ones and we thank God for that I had an unusual conversation with Tito, my wife's nephew. He talked to me about two hours, and that was very unusual. I told my wife, I said, it's very unusual that he talked about two hours straight. But I listened to him, and he went through a litany of things that God had blessed him with his three girls and how they had been good. And about three months later, he was dead. Three months later, he was dead. But he was pouring out his soul during that conversation. And saints, whatever he had to get off his chest, he had an opportunity 
So when we saw him in the hospital in Virginia, we saw him on that Thursday and Friday, and that Sunday he was dead. So anytime you got a chance in God's house to give him praise and honor, stop looking at other folks and look within yourself. What can I do to make this world better? What can I do to be friendly, make friends, and not make enemies? Not everybody's going to like you, but you can still show kindness and love. Nobody's going to always like you. And somebody's going to hate you for no reason, just because you are you. But that shouldn't affect you, because you can turn your enemy into a, a friend by showing love. See, people judge because of who you are, what you are. But it don't make you who they say you are because they judge in that manner. Amen? So as we as people of God, we have to learn one thing. God is in charge. <laughs> Somebody give God a prayer. He's in charge. No matter what anyone does or say, he is in charge. We won't be very, we won't, because we got a baptism this morning. We had a few bumps in the road, but I want you to look at Psalm 138. You don't, have, you don't have to turn your Bibles if you don't want to, but you can. I think about the time that God saved me. I think about the time that I could have been in the same position Brother Tyler was in. All of us could have been in the same position. All of us have been places we shouldn't have been. All of us, some of us, not all, may have been around somebody who was shooting, but it didn't hit you. So all of us have been in some gray areas, I call it, in our lives. But God is so good. Even when we are so bad, God is so good. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Even when we are so bad, God is still good. And I give him honor, I give him praise this morning. Good to see Brother Xavier. Good, good to see him this morning. Psalms 138 says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Second verse, what I like is, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast manifested thy word above all thy name. In the day when I cried, thou answered me and strengthened me and strength, and strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he has, been, he has respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. They are walked in the midst of trouble, Thou will revive me, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands against the, the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will, will perfect that which he concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, to do it forever. Forsake not the works of thy own hands. Somebody give God praise for these verse. Perfect the work, the things toward me. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are excited about what God is up to in this next chapter of our lives. God's greatness, God's goodness, and God's greatness. God's goodness and God's greatness. Look at somebody and say, God's goodness and God's greatness. Now, let's say it with some authority. Come on. God's what? And what else? Say it with more authority. So God's goodness and his greatness. 
the composer of this psalm had been threatened by his enemies. I said the composer of this song had been threatened by his enemies. But God protected him. Look at yourselves and God protected me. Glory to God. Somebody give God a praise right there. So now I praise God for his goodness and his greatness. So when God protects you, it's because of God's goodness and his greatness. Somebody give God a praise right there on that note. Because it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. Glory to God. The enemy was thrown up. But it was by the goodness that lies would have destroyed you. The backbite would have destroyed you. But there was a mercy of God and his greatness and his goodness. We were not consumed. Oh, you went about you? It was not bringing you up, but it was out the goodness of God. His personal praise. His personal praise toward us. In the transition of the song began, I will praise thee, O Lord. But the words, O Lord, are not the original Hebrew text, which simply says, I will praise you. The simple text that says, I will praise you. Not anybody else. Not the king. But I'm praising you. When we realize the fact it is the Lord that has brought you this far by faith. Nobody else, not by your dance, not your shout, not your preaching, not your testimony, but it was by the goodness and greatness of God that you are here this morning. Can you lift your hands? So, Lord, I thank you. So many I know are gone. So many I know that were sick when I was sick, but I'm still here. I'll never forget the time I was at the emergency room, and I saw the pastor come out. And he had an oxygen tank behind him. Later on, I heard he was gone. It could have been me the same night. But it was the mercy of God, his goodness and his greatness that I was not consumed. You ought to give God a praise, saying, because I know right now, many of you are facing the enemy right now. Many of you are going through some stuff right now in your life that you cannot control. But you got a great God that control control your circumstances. He's a personal God. he got your name on it. He's got your name. It's a personal relationship with God. And when you realize the fact it is personal with God, anything happened to a saint, it is personal. People don't know what they're doing when they mess with you. Because God takes personal action against your enemies. I say he takes personal interest in you as a believer. In fact, God's name is never mentioned in the three verses of the Psalms. The psalmist is so caught up in thinking about the, and praising God that he only speak of God in terms of you and yours. He got so caught up, he couldn't even say Jesus. You ever been that way when you, something happened so quick, you didn't even have, you didn't have time to say Jesus. Only thing you can say was, well, thank you, Lord. I could have been in an accident, Lord. I could have died, Lord, but I thank you. You didn't even call his name, but you said, thank you, Lord. Things happen so quick. You don't have time to say hallelujah. But I tell you something, in a nanosecond, you know God was there. You know he was there. He had never, the psalm realized, I didn't even call his name, but this should be not only disrespect, but here in the part of this man where seniors are addressed as their, by their name in many parts of the world. Husbands and wives do not pronounce each other's name in public or when spouses are presented in certain countries. But in America, you get freedoms. You are blessed to be in a country as great as America. Some women have to walk behind their husband so many steps. Some religions don't cause a woman to walk beside her husband and not even respect it in the street. 
that woman that was at the well, she was not even permitted to address the man. She, and when Jesus spoke to her, she said, well, you, you're speaking to me. They were not allowed to even speak to a female outside without her husband being in the presence. Women got freedom in America. You got freedom around the world. You ought to give God thank you for having freedoms. You know, you know, you understand we, we, we got freedom in America. We don't realize how blessed we are. Because somebody died for your freedom. Somebody gave that life for your freedom. It was not free. It was somebody that died. Jesus Christ died for your liberty and your freedom to have eternal life. Same thing when your brothers and sisters go into combat, go into war, and the blood stained in that country, then that body sometimes never be found. But yet and still, you ought to give God thank you for those that gave their life for you. Some gave some, but some gave all. Jesus Christ gave it all. Give God a praise in this house. Anytime you see a veteran, whether it's woman or man, you ought to say, I thank you for your service because you could have died. But praise God, you made it back home. But we are so disrespectful in America. We don't give honors to nobody but ourselves. But I'm going to come and tell you, one day you're going to give honor to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. You're going to give honor. You're going to give respect. It's coming a time when you will give respect. When I grew up, you always addressed all of me as yes, sir, and no, sir. Yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Now kids saying yes and no because we done took all, I mean, you train your child at home. The teacher's not going to do it. That's not their job. But you teach respect starting at home. And you go a long ways with respect. Respect for open doors that you shouldn't be going in right now. Ways been made because of your respect. The way you show your respect. The way you act as a Christian. So how the Christians don't know how to act. They get uh, uh, obscene. They get crazy. And they start acting crazy and, and doing all kinds. Of, but we hold your dignity and let God fight your battle, saying he can do more than fists and guns can do. God opened doors and men was shedding your face. Men of you should have the job you got. But it was by the mercy of God that you have your position right now. By his goodness and it's by your goodness for God that that door is open. I will listen to a, a gentleman telling me about it. He was, um, not calling a name, but he was interviewing somebody for a certain position. And, and they had a group together that was talking about this person. This person they had elected decided not to take the position. So they looked at him and said, well, you, what, we'll, we'll take you. At the right place, somebody said at the right time. <laughs> somebody give God praise. You could have been, he could have been somebody else. Couldn't be doing something else. Couldn't take a day off. But at the right place, at the right time, God makes his move. Let me try to give God a praise. God has blessed me some saints. I can't, I, I can't tell you all the miracles God has done in my life. I can't tell you the place I've been. I can tell you the heights I have soared. Why? It wasn't me, but it was the goodness of God. It was the greatness of God. I stood before great men and women around this country. I've been in some places I shouldn't have been, but God put me there. I was set right beside Hillary Clinton. I was serving all the great people of America. I was sitting in the same room. My wife was sitting right beside him. Lord, I, I mean, God is so good. Dorothy Heights, all the big time people was there. Why? Because God will make you great. God will make your name great if you just be humble. Stay humble, saints. Stay humble. So we get big, we forget about humbleness. But never forget where God has placed you. He placed you there for a purpose. To show those folks that are unsaved that people can live saved in the midst of all this. I never forget we, was in, we were in Los, well, in Los Angeles at the 84 Olympics. I'm out there with the 84 Olympics, but Michael Jordan was there. He was just a rookie. 84 Olympics was a big deal. My wife and I flew out there. The company paid for everything. We stayed at the Fifth and Flowers at Benavent Bonaventure Hotel on the 62nd floor. They brought in champagne. They brought in all kind of other stuff. We pulled the champagne out. 
We're 3,000 miles away. We could drink that liquor and champagne and never been nobody to know but us. But God. He would have known. So you got to keep your integrity no matter where you are. Who's in Chicago? They spent a million dollars for this party for, for, for the film directors. We were there. Champagne, they had caviar, they had red, they had blue, a black, they had shrimp to the silhouette. All these places, but I kept my integrity. We have to, no matter how high you rise in this life, you got to stay grounded. Lord, help me. And, oh, yeah, you get the big head now. But you got to stay grounded. I got arrogant. I got the big head. Because I soared so high. But God brought me down. Somebody give God a praise. He, he said, you forgot who brought you. You forgot who made you. Remember when you couldn't buy a loaf of bread. Remember when you couldn't put gas in your car. Remember, God began to bring my mind back where I started from. Somebody give God a praise. God will bring, do you want to go back where I brought you from? If you're not happy where you are, I'll bring you back to $5 an hour. I'll bring you back to that place you were living in. I'll bring you back to the car you was driving. If you feel like you've gotten so big that you don't need me, hallelujah, somebody give God a praise. I'm still God. I'm still the one that made you. I'm still the one that brought you. So I learned in that space of time, those gold Rolex watches that I own didn't matter. The diamonds didn't matter anymore. The custom suits didn't matter anymore. I put it away. I don't touch it. Oh, yeah, I can bring some stuff out to mess you up. I don't. Because God said, people be watching the, wing, the rings and the watches and the clothes more than I'm watching God. And what would stop me from wearing the Rolex was a man walked up to me and said, I want to see that a real Rolex. That thing touched me. He was more interested in the watch than he was in the word of God. So you got to be very careful, saints who you can affect even in your walk and your spiritual walk. Don't flaunt what God gave you. Be thankful. Somebody give God a praise. Don't flaunt it. Be thankful that you're able to go places. You may be staying in the best hotel. We, our first honeymoon, Mother Grace and Bishop Carroll, we didn't have money to go on honeymoon. They took us to Virginia. That was our honeymoon trip. We were very poor, very humble. But God taught me a lesson. Do you want to go back or you want to stay where you are? You're going to have to change the way you are or we can go back to where you come from. So that's a word to somebody this morning. Don't, if you want to go back to your humble beginnings, Keep living the way you're living. But if you want to stay where you are, remember, God is great and God is good. Somebody stop and give God a praise. He wants us to know he is the one that made you successful. He's the one that made you prosperous. He's the one that gave you what you have. But if you want to go back, he'll carry you back. Be careful, saints. Be careful. Be careful. Let me go back to my text. But I want to share with you that because a lot of people have followed me in the wrong vein. I want to let you know, I don't want to go back. So I got to stay humble. I got to stay down where God can use me. God can't use you when you're high and mighty. He uses you when you're low down at the feet of Jesus. Stay low, saints. Stay low down. I remember how God really visited me. And I'm telling you something. The bishop told me this. He said, Bishop, 
He said, Elder Fowler, you're traveling too much. He said, you need to slow down. I said, Bishop, I got to feed my family. He said, no, you're traveling too much. You do, you're doing too much. So you get caught up in your own little world. And it takes somebody else to see who you really are. Nathan had to tell David who he was. David was a king. He was powerful. Had, had killed a lot of folks. Had been in many battles, many conflicts. But David couldn't even control his own nature. He couldn't control his own body. Took another man's wife. Had a child, and God said, a child cannot live. I'm the king. I can do what I want to do. But God said, the child can't live. God took the child. God said, I'm God. You're the king, but I'm God. I'm greater than you. Your thing is temporary, but mine is permanent. The king is only temporary, but the king of kings is forever and ever. Somebody give God a praise. Jesus will never die. He'll live forever. So God wants us to know, saints, one thing. Remember who brought you. Remember doors that will open in your life. Who opened those doors? Who made those ways? Don't get mad and upset with somebody else by your failures and your fault. Look within yourself. And say, Lord, help me. Help me. Because we can get beside ourselves, can't we? All of us. See, Bishop told us years ago, he said either the, the devil will push you too far or he'll hold you back. But if you, he'll push you overboard, he will say. And that's what happened to a lot of saints. We go overboard with a lot of stuff. We go overboard because it don't make sense. Stop bringing and stop hurting other folks because they're not where you are. They're growing. People are going to make mistakes. You made mistakes. People are going to do wrong. You did wrong. They're not mature as you are. They're trying to get there. So don't be so hard on somebody else that's not where you are today. Somebody give God thank you for that. I, right there, a good time. Say thank you because a lot of times we condemn folks, but we, nobody condemned us when we were at the same place they were. You were there. You were there at that same spot. But God delivered you. So when somebody else is at that spot, you need to encourage them. You need to wrap your arms around and say, baby, you can make it, sir. Young man, you can make it. Come on, let's go. Wrap your arms around. Don't try to destroy them, but wrap your arms around and say, look, you can make it. God, and grab them and say, look, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to be with you. I don't care what you're going through. I'm going to be right there praying for you that God will bring you through. And God will bring that individual through. But they need you and I to be with them and encourage their heart. And be going to fall about through. But I want to bring that to our attention because sometimes we get it confused. You think that people can just get up and do. No, they need help. Sometimes we need help. We need to be encouraged. And I tell you, it's a great thing when you got somebody to encourage you and let folks know, I've been there. Somebody said, well, you, you, you never drink, y'all. Somebody said, well, the people that smoke, you never smoke because God delivered them. If you look at some of the seniors, they can tell you some stuff they did. You say, no, you didn't do that. But all of us in this building got some stuff in our lives that we have done. Well, God grew us out of those places. Somebody thank God for being delivered today. I thank God for his mercy. I thank God I was not consumed. I thank God and died my mess because I could have died in my sin. But it was the grace of God that I was not consumed. So I thank the Lord that you would have been in hell right now if you had died the way you were. I said the way you were. But it was the goodness of God. Okay, I'm about to. Now, 
Psalms 138, 6 and 8 says, Important people who are rich and powerful tend to look down on everyone else. Listen very carefully. 6 and 8. Important people who are rich and powerful tend to look down on everyone else. Not only rich folks, sometimes church folks. Rich and powerful. You got rich and powerful preachers, pastors, and look down on someone else. And particularly on those who are poor. And particularly on those who are poor. They should compare the attitude that all powerful ones who is rich that own their own universe. God does not dismiss the loneliness, but he stirs, he stays clear of the proud, for he hated the proud. Psalm 138 and 6, he hated the proud. In fact, God is concerned about who trusts in him. Psalm 138 and 7, the evidence that the psalmist has seen the God's protection gives him confidence. He knows God is a potter and we are the clay that shapes and fulfill the loving purpose. So Solomon humbly prayed that God will not abandon the works of his hands. God, please don't abandon me. I want you to think very clearly, saints. We are all in the power of his hand. We're just clay. And God shapes the clay that what he wants to be. So if you're, not, if you're not the finished product yet, God is still shaping you. I said God is still shaping all of us. Whether you're 80, 100, or 90, the, God is shaping all of us. If you was perfect as God wanted you to be, you would not be here. God keeps you here and so you won't be lost. So he keeps you a long time to shape you. And what he wants you to be. And I said, God, keep working on me. Don't give up, Lord. If I'm not ready, then, Lord, you keep fixing it. If I'm not ready, Lord, keep on working on me because I don't want to miss heaven. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Ready, ready, give God a praise. You ought to thank God that you didn't die the way you were. So some says, the last verses, giving the fact that God loves endures forever. God's love endureth forever. Look at somebody and say, God's love endureth forever. He don't give up on me. He, he ain't divorced you because you don't look the same you did when you got first got married. God don't dismiss you because you made some mistakes. God don't let you go because you went kind of crazy. But God kept on, kept on loving you. Y'all been talking about saying, you know, we made some bad <laughs> decisions. But he kept on loving us. He kept on loving us. He gave the fact that his love endured forever. There's no chance of his ultimate abandoning us. His faithful service. He never gives up on you. And when somebody tried to make you give up on God, just ignore them. Don't even want to be around them. If you can't encourage me, don't discourage me. If you can't lift me up, leave me alone. I won't be around some folks that can encourage my heart because I tell you, I need encouragement. Let us all stand with you to go to preachers to come in to pray. I don't know about you, but I want somebody to encourage me. I don't need no, no, no bad news and always gloom and gloom. Always talking about how bad things are. Oh, I've been sick all day. You've been sick all your life? Did you get some good days? Can't you say something good about God? How you feeling? Oh, I feel bad. I, I, you look good? No, I just, I feel bad. Every time you see them, they feel bad. I don't want to be around about like that's just a big low. I want to be around some encouraging. I want some positive conversation. Oh, my foot hurt. Let me get up around you. I don't want to say Jump on my foot. Amen. Praise God. Ella Robinson in the back. Come on up, Ella Robinson. 
Hey, tell the robbers, come on up. We, we'll take you at the computer. So we want to be encouraged. Those that need special prayer, we got a baptism this morning for a young man that God might continue to bless his heart because I think that's the best move anybody could make. I tell you, I thank God I got baptized when I did. Amen. I was 26, 27 when I got baptized in Jesus' name. I tell you, the best thing ever happened to me, saints. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I got baptized and down in that grave, liquid grave. Amen. <clears throat> and I thank God for salvation. I thank God for it. It's sick. In the morning, sick, come up for prayer, and you need to be encouraged. You need to be baptized, or whatever you need. God's got whatever you need. Hallelujah. Come on up. Those need special prayer. God will. God will. God will. He'll do it for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes.
belong to you. My hallelujah belong to you. My hallelujah belong. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Said she, she couldn't hold the music. She couldn't feel anything her hand in her hands. So it's bigger. What happened? Is it all right? Do you feel anything though? Now you move your fingers. You. God is a good God. He don't need no help. We get ready for, uh, what's his name? Get ready for baptism. Sean. Sean, get ready for baptism. We praise God for him. That's Pee Wee's, uh, we call him Pee Wee, Dion's son. Amen. Amen. God bless him. Amen.
Thanks. This is our Christmas this Sunday. Well, next Sunday is the last Sunday in the month, but we want to do something special uh, for our, our First Lady and our pastor this morning. Uh, we have a gift for our pastor. We, let's give him a hand, our pastor, Bishop Fowler. <laughs> Brother Raffi, come and get this gift up if you would. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yes, we uh, want to thank our pastor for a whole year of giving us the word and just, if, if one thing about Bishop, if you're sick, he's coming. If you're hungry, he's going to be there. And this is a time we can show him how much we appreciate him. So we're going to ask, uh, bring the gift what we got for our pastor at this time. Brother Raffi, bring pastor's gift for me. No, that's not, that's not pastor's. First lady got pastor gifts over here. Bishop's gift. They're trying to give me something else, ain't they, Bishop? <laughs> Amen. Can we stand and just give Bishop a hand at this time? Merry Christmas to you, Bishop, from the Smyrna Church of Christ. Amen. God bless you, Bishop. At this time, we're going to ask First Lady Fowler, would you come up, please? Amen. This is our first lady. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Bishop dressed up like Christmas today. Amen. Bishop did this. Amen. Can y'all, uh, Brother Raffi, can you get that other package from me and bring it to me? Amen. This is on behalf of Smyrna Church of Christ. Huh? Let's give her a hand. This is for our first lady. Y'all know what she just asked me? She said, what is it? Then I, said, then I looked at her. She said, you don't know, do you? <laughs> at this time, we're going to turn the service back in the hands of First Lady Fowler. Amen. Let's give another hand. Amen. Um, we would like to praise the Lord, everybody. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Y'all ready to go home, aren't you? Um, we have um, someone who remembers the Smyrna Church. It said, a light has been placed upon Annie Penn Hospital's auxiliary tree of hope in the name of Smyrna Church of Christ, the true light. And this was given by Brother Frankie Carter. So we do want to thank all of the saints for all of your love and your consistency and your perseverance for, I don't know, a long time, a very long time. And when you are consistent, it just means, you know, doing what you do consistently over and over again. And we have saints here who have been consistent down through the years. And so we thank you for your love and we pray that God will continue to bless you. First, okay, so the first thing on agenda, we have two people with uh, birthdays today, um, Elder Miller and Ella Kenneth Simpson. Can we sing happy birthday to them? Mm -hmm. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Elder Miller. Happy birthday to you. How old are you? Okay. All right, 51. I was once 51. Hallelujah. We thank God for our musicians. And so at this time, Paris, get over here. That's okay. I'll take you. Um, Davis Fowler, so glad that God has blessed you to heal properly and to come back. And I know it's during the whole time you just had faith to believe that God was just going to make everything all right. Brother Paris. Brother Paris. Here. Brother Desmond, can you come over here, please? This is Desmond Fowler, Desmond J. Fowler. Lord is blessing him on the bass guitar. Getting ready to get his learner's permit. Look out. Next we have um, Elder and Sister Miller. Could you come up, please? Thank you for your consistency, your perseverance in Jesus' name. You're a beautiful, beautiful couple. May God continue to bless you. Brother Tyrone and Sister Dickerson. This young lady is consistent. She just put out our, put out our New Year's flyer. We thank God for her. So easy to work with. So easy. Brother Clayton and Sister Mitchell. These two faithful young people. Thank you for your service. Remain true to Jesus. Okay? Remain true to him. Don't go back on him. Dick and Jimmy and Sister Patricia Watkins. Sister Patricia Watkins. Dick and Jimmy, grab her hand. <laughs> Aren't they beautiful? Give them a hand. We love you. Thank you for your faithfulness. You are so beautiful. Gorgeous. You're gorgeous. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. Love you. Next we have is our Chairman Deacon Turner, we we'll ask him to come up. I got hers right here. So faithful, Amen. so consistent, persevere. They are always just awesome young man. Awesome, awesome. 
Next we have Brother Vincent Turner. Brother Vincent Turner. Can you walk a little bit faster? <laughs> Thank you, Brother Vincent, for your faithfulness. Thank you so much. You got jokes too, eh? I got jokes. <laughs> Elder Clarence Robertson. Can you move a little bit faster? Thank you. <laughs> so consistent in the ministry. Thank you, Elder Robertson, for everything. Thank you. Uh, I, just, I just want to say uh, I didn't think I was going to be nominated. Uh, I appreciate everybody. I didn't uh, have no announcement, nothing, nothing like that. Um, I also want to thank God. I uh, want to give a shout out to my family and uh, to, uh, to, uh, to my son, uh, Deontay. We made it. <laughs> oh, prayer strength in the Lord. <laughs> thank God for him. Next, thank God for you. No, what? No, I didn't. No. <laughs> Next, we have the Lindsay Catering Service. Amen. The Lindsay, hurry up, Lindsay Catering Service. Hurry up. No, I need the Lindsay Catering Service. Say what? Lindsay Catering Service, Sister Vidya Hall. Sister Vidya, Lindsay Catering Service. Lindsay Catering Service. Okay. Y'all are so beautiful. Thank you for everything. Sister Juanita King, I have to say about her, she's been collecting the monies from the missionary. She has been consistent of doing her job for the past years. And because of what she has done, we have been able to give baskets to the poor and the needy and to the sick and the shut-in. We thank God for Sister King. Sister King, let her come up. So Sister King is a young woman. She can get up here. She'll come. She'll come. She'll come. Got to use those muscles. <laughs> Sister King, thank you. You are just so beautiful. I was trying to help Sister King on the car. She said, get your hands off me. I can make it. <laughs> We have our mother of the church for years. You know, she has been in our lives. And even before you all came, I was in Mother Carter's life, in their family's life. You know, we stayed there when we were little. Mother Carter is the most beautiful woman you would ever want to be around. A great missionary. Somebody that you can talk to. And we thank God for you, Mother Carter. Can she walk? Brother Mark says she can walk. Bishop. <laughs> okay, not here is Sister Brenda Gwen. She's not here. She, Sister Brenda Gwen is not here. She is the pres. Uh -huh. Sister Brenda is not here, and Sister um, Ella Simpson is not here. And so we'll hold these. If Sister, can you hear me? Sorry. Okay. Sister Brenda Gwen is not here, so we're asking her sister if she would come 
and receive this for her. She has been so faithful, Sister Brenda, as an usher of the president, and also while you're up here, Sister Mary Bolden, thank you for helping her out. Um, Sister Nancy Turner. Sister Nancy Turner. Consistent, beautiful young lady. I mean, she anything that you want or anything that we need done from the church, she has always been there for an open hand. Just love her cannot really give her enough for all that she has done, but we want to just thank her in Jesus' name for her work in the Lord. You are so beautiful, beautiful lady. And next we have sister, I'm, I'll just tell you this, like five or six months ago in a dream, the Lord gave me sister Deborah Graves. I didn't know why he gave me Sister Deborah Graves' name, but I just, you know, for the past two or three nights, she just kept coming in my spirit. And so I thought then that I needed to do something, but I didn't do it when the Lord was impressing upon me. So I just want to honor Sister Deborah because the Lord says do so because she has been faithful and consistent. She's never gotten out of the choir. She's always been the treasurer of the church. She has always picking up people to come to church. Just a real sure missionary. So the Lord gave me her, and I want to present her with this. And I want y'all to give her a big round of applause because the Lord said so. This is The Lord says so, because the Lord said so. I don't care if it's raining or sleeting or snowing. You know, if I could call Sister Deborah for anything, and she'll just come right out. And we thank God for our single people who can actually do that, because if you're married, it's kind of hard to get that done. <laughs> Ask Sister Turner if she would come up and present these to the youth department. Sister Bella Turner. Okay. I want to say Merry Christmas from the Smyrna Church. We thank and praise God for all that you do. Continue working for the Lord. Amen. 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 Sister Soroya Lindsay. We thank and praise God for all that you do, and we ask that you continue to work for the Lord and continue to let the Lord use you. Brother Jameer Jackson. Man. Man. This is our little quartet singer. We thank and praise God for you. And we ask that you continue to let the Lord use you. Merry Christmas. Brother Raphael Turner. We thank and praise God for you. We thank the Lord for you letting him use you. And we ask that you continue to work in the house of the Lord and continue being sweet. <clears throat> Brother C.J. Hall, let's give him a hand. This is our genius in the church. We, we're looking for great things from him in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give him a hand. We thank and praise the Lord for him continuing to work in the church, and we ask that you continue to let the Lord use you. Merry Christmas. Brother Tyrone Jr., is 
here? Oh. We thank and praise the Lord for him. He continues to usher and work in the church, and we want him to continue to let the Lord use him. We thank the Lord for his mom coming to receive his Christmas gift. Okay, we have our seniors that we would like to give out a gift for. Our sister Lisa if, and whoever else will come up at this time. Baskets were prepared by, by who? By the Lord, <laughs> by Sister Lisa and I'm going to just say the Lindsay and the youth department. Sister King, Mother Carter, Sister Patricia Neal, Sister Jackson, Mother Moorhead, Sister June Willis, Sister Irene Bigelow. And to all the saints, we thank you for all that you do. And we pray that God will bless you in the new year and that we will do better in our service to the Lord. God has great things in store for us. We thank God for our baptismal um, candidate today. Huh? All the water. Okay. We just want to let, uh, we have some um, extra bags up here. So if anyone did not get a gift, if you would like to come up and get a gift bag, you're more than, um, we're more than happy to give you some. So can you all hear me? We have some extra bags over here. So if anyone would like to come and get one, please feel free to do so. We're going to turn the service back over to the hands of our pastor. Amen. <clears throat> well, we're going to let you go. We had planned the baptism of the pool. Something happens to the, the baptism of the pool, so we rescheduled it. Uh, I don't know if Tom Ella Robinson just let me know he had spoken to a young man by baptism, but the water was not coming in correctly, so we, we scheduled it. We we're going to let, you, let the saints know, because I was ready. I was ready for this baptism. And we're hoping more people will be baptized, young people. Because it's very important, saints. It's very, very important. And so we thank God for that. But we, they have already gotten together and rescheduled. And I know Pee Wee was excited, and he, was, he didn't know what was going down. Amen. We thank God. Anytime your, your children or grandchildren are getting baptized, it's an exciting time. Amen. Because they, they're transitioning. And we love that. We're going to let you go. Let us all stand. It's good to see Brother Mark this morning. Be with us and all the saints that came out. I thank God for the, for the uh, gifts. Thank God for the testimony. Sister Mitchell is a faithful young lady. And, and so many thousands didn't get that letter, that email. So many thousands. Brother Mark. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We, we, we know Brother Daisy to get his and Sister Tegan to get theirs. 
so we can move on. But God is doing a great thing. We just thank God. But it's faithful in tithing, saints. It's, you, if you're a tither, I'm telling you, God opens some, some magnificent doors. Yeah, I'm telling you, you can't beat God in tithing. If you're not a tither, start doing it. I tell you, it works. And, and I tell you, the only thing I can say, God, thank you. Thank you. Because he has been good. And uh, thank God for the teaching of the saints, teaching their children about tithing. And they're going to go their way, but I'm telling you, you can't beat God. Can't beat it. Father God, in the precious and adorable name of Jesus, we thank you for this awesome Sunday morning service. We thank you for the candidate for baptism. Oh, God, we want you to bless him that we may continue with his growth. We thank God because you blessed him not only naturally but spiritually. We thank God for every door that you open for this young man. Praise the name of Jesus. Because so many young people are in drugs and alcohol and all kind of gang banging. But this young man is seeking the face of God. Wrap your arms around Jesus and protect him as he go forth. In Jesus' name, all God's people say amen.